Hey, what's going on? I got a, another concatenation user defined function. This one's actually a little bit more, a little bit simpler than the last one I did. It is called concat unique. It takes two arguments, concat range and my separator, and I'll show you what that looks like. So, for instance, if I have a list of names such as this one, this function will take that list, concat unique, grab the range, and create a separator and it just concats the unique items. So for instance, if I took Dan and copied it up there, it'd just be John and Dan. If I throw in Matt and then Matt again, Matt would only appear once. So this function is actually pretty easy. It only takes uh, two arguments. It takes a range and a separator. It returns a string and we can get started right now. So to get to your Visual Basic development environment, hit Alt F11 and this will take you there. We can start on this function, and the, the thing about creating function is the first thing you do is you type in the word function, and then the name of that function. In this case, it's going to be concat unique. Our first argument will be a range called concat range. Because I don't know the data types, I'm going to call it a variant, like so. My second argument is going to be the separator string, which I call my sep, call it a string. And the whole thing is going to return a string, so I place that type on the outside, like so. Okay, so I'm going to name a variable. I'm going to call it current string. If you've seen any of my other concatenation function videos, this is in both of them. And I'm actually going to set my current string equal to null. And I'm going to declare another variable called x. And x is just going to act like my counter for a do while statement. So I'm going to say dim x as integer. I forgot to say dim current string as string. All right, there we go. And I need to instantiate x by saying x equals 1. So the next thing to do would be to create my loop. Basically what the loop is going to do is it's going to loop through each item in concatenate range and check whether that item is found in this current string item. So if it is found in the current string item, I'm not going to include it. However, if it is not found, I will include it. Uh, VBA has a method or a function called instring I can use to do this. So I can say do while x is less than or equal to concat range dot count and then I'm going to close a do while or any do off with a loop statement. Do while just means uh, it's going to do the code in the code block until this condition is met or uh, excuse me until this condition is surpassed. Um, as opposed to an, a do until, which will do something until the condition has been met. The first thing I want to do is write a decision statement. So if instr is the VBA function, my start number will be 1. The function hint right here isn't very helpful. It doesn't tell us what the difference between string 1 is and string 2. String 1 is actually the string we're going to look into, and string 2 is the string we're looking, we're going to look for. So string 1 is going to be our current string, and string 2 is actually going to be our concat range at index of x. So as x keeps growing and growing, this is going to become a 1, and then a 2, and then a 3, and then a 4. So it's going to, this variable will keep changing based on what our index is set to. So I'm going to close off the instring method, and I'm going to say, is it equal to zero? And if it is equal to zero, which means that this concat range item was not found in our current string, then I'm going to say current string is equal to the current string ampersand concat range at x, and of course, my set. Then I'm going to close this off by writing end if. And for a loop to work and not be an infinite loop, um, I need to iterate x. So unlike a for statement where I would say for i equals 1 to something, or for each i in a collection, I actually need to go in here and say x equals x plus 1. Otherwise, we have something called infinite recursion where this loop will just keep going and going and going. Okay, so once that's done, once it x surpasses this guy, the sequence will hit this statement and then bounce past the loop. And this is where we're going to turn current string. So I'm going to say concat unique, which is the name of this function. And then I'm just going to say equals current string. And another cool thing I can do is, um, as it sits right now, my separator will be at the end of the string. So I need to delete that 
and I can do that by saying current string is equal to the left of the current string and at this point I can say how many characters over from the very left are we going to go and I'm going to use length as my way to determine that so I'm going to go with the length of the current string minus the length of my separator close that off that should do it. Alright, so let's see if it worked. Moment of truth. Equals concat unique. This guy and close it off. There we go. Looks like it did work. John came first, Dan and then Matt. So what happened was uh, as it went through it, it checked whether John existed within our current string and it didn't at first because our current string was set to blank and then it looped again now our current string is John so then it checked if Dan was in there and Dan was not so it added Dan looped again it found that Dan was in there looped again it found that Dan was in there again again until it hit Matt at which Matt was not in there so it added Matt to the end of that anyway I hope you have enjoyed this video if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you alright thanks